Hey, welcome to my Season 3 and 4 guide for Guardian Druid in Dragonflight. I have gotten quite a few comments of people saying that they're new to Bear and that my gameplay videos have been helpful, so I figured I'd make a quick guide on some of the basic fundamentals of Bear in Mythic Plus. This will be an unedited guide, so if you only care about like trinkets or rotation or cooldown usage or whatever, uh, there will be timestamps that you guys can click on to uh, go to whatever section of the video that you care about. If you want to know, like, I guess, some credentials, the only thing I really have is logs. If you care about this thing, here are my normal logs for raid. Here are my heroic logs. And we've only killed a few bosses on Mythic. This doesn't really mean anything. Uh, it, here's the Mythic Plus logs. or I don't really know what this means, but if you care, here you are. So I do think I have a fairly decent understanding of how bear works, and I can teach some new bears uh, some fundamentals. So in this video... We will be covering everything you see here, so stats, trinkets, gems, all that stuff, uh, talents, including two builds that I run. I run two, two builds, depending on how I'm feeling, uh, rotation and CD usage. Big thing, though, is I want to talk about here is in, like initiating a pull as well. You know, In a Mythic Plus, what do you do when you're going to pull dry, or if you're running low, or how do you pull a boss correctly? And then at the end, there's a few uh, just tips and tricks that you might find helpful. So I want to keep this as short as possible. So let's just talk, or let's get right into the stats. So the nice thing with Bear is that we kind of like all the stats to some extent. Uh, crit, Haste, Mastery, Verse all benefit us quite well. So if you are just starting gearing your character or your lower item level, just take whatever piece has the highest item level. Uh, quantity over quality for stats is a safe bet while, I mean, just in general for Bear. But when you do get to a point where you can choose your stats, like when you start to craft your gear, then I recommend going for haste and verse. The So haste is such a nice stat because it speeds up your gameplay and it increases the amount of rage that we generate. The reason rage generation is so good for us is because it means more iron furs, means more mauls, more raises, and it even means more... After the wildfire healing, more thorns of iron damage, more raises for more Ursuk's fury absorbs, more incarn CDR. So rage really good for us. That's why I really like um, I really really like haste. It's also just a fun stat. Who doesn't like you know faster gameplay? And then the next stat that I prioritize is versatility. That's with a file. Let me take that off. So without a file, I have that much verse. Verse, verse is nice because it's it's a really safe stat since it's decent for damage and it gives us some damage reduction that will help with all types of damage including magic and bleeds which uh, we are afraid of but don't worry about the exact number of verse or exact number of haste you have is if you go for item level you're probably going to be fine it's just i like to throw in some haste and verse just because i think those stats are uh, just nice for bear in general if for gems and enchants, gems, I go for verse haste. I do have my primary stat gem with verse, as you can see, verse haste, and then primary stat verse. Devotion of haste on that ring, devotion of haste on this ring. I'll just quickly hover over my gear. So we got helm enchant, regenerative leech, leech, sophic devotion. Some people like to run the other... Uh, New one they added, like the Shadow Flame Wreath. That one does do more damage, but I like Sophic Devotion because it's also decent for damage, but it also gives us some extra agility, which will also help with us uh, defensively. Watcher's Loam on the boots. Typical armor kit on the legs. And then if you can afford it, you're going to want the Shadow Belt Clasp on your belt. So yeah, I think that covers gear for the most part. So for Trinkets, uh, this combo you see right here, Augury the Primal Flame and Cataclysmic Signic Brand, are the highest simming single target trinkets that you can run, I believe. So if you want extra single target, like let's say it's a hard tyrannical beak, running these is a safe bet. Even in AoE, both of these uh, trinkets are completely fine, it's respect completely respectable. However, the Farak trinket, the tank one, Rage Hard, does sim higher than Cataclysmic Signet Brand for me. So Augury plus that would be my highest simming DPS combo. But if you really, really, really care about uh, trinkets or damage just just sim it just look at what trinkets you have sim it there you go you got your highest uh dps trinkets for defensive trinkets you're gonna 
in my opinion, you're going to want Chi Death. Very safe pick. It's not only is it insane when it procs, but it's also a mindset gain. When you know you have a Chi Death in the bag, you're, it just literally your heart rate lowers, your cortisol lowers. It's just really good. I really like really like Chi Death. And then you would want to run the Ferox Trinket again, the Mass Absorb Trinket that does insane damage. Like I want, I want it, please. Can I get it? But yeah, I don't have it. Um, now, obviously, let's say you don't raid or RNG hates you. There are some decent alternatives from Mythic Plus that you can run, which I'll just quickly go over. So Dawn of the Infinite, obviously you have the Chi Death, but you also have the Accelerating Sandglass. This is solid for damage. Midas Talisman, solid for damage. Black Rook Hold, Amber of Notification, not the best DPS trinket, but it's a good statistic. Spike Counter Rate, solid for damage. Also, you have, if you want to go Balance Spec, Cage Horror, decent for damage. Dark Heart Thicket, Oak Heart's Gnarled Root. This is probably like the closest thing to a Ray Trinket you'll get. This thing seems insanely high for me. Does good damage, has Verse, really good. Same with uh, Corrective Starlight, also not terrible. If you get that, don't be upset, it's not terrible. Uh, that's it for Dark Heart. Everbloom, there is the Withers Bark Branch, this thing. This thing holds up both in single target and AoE. Uh, it's, so it's solid in both scenarios, not the best, but wouldn't be upset if I got it. And then the Porcelain Crab is just a nice safe stat stick if you uh, don't want to think about anything. Not terrible. Sims fairly high. I think that's all I want to talk about for trinkets. Let's go over build. Builds, rather. So starting in the Druid tree. So as you can see, I have four points available. But everything that you see that I've taken right now is what, for me, is it's non-negotiable. Like you will never see me drop any point I have in right now. Some people might not take Wild Charge, but for me, if you watch my gameplay, I use this so often, I, I cannot play without this. And th then these four points can go literally pretty much wherever you want. If you like Heart of the Wild, go for it. If you want some inc or, uh, Stampede War Star, go for it. Innervate, go for it. Nature Vigil, go for it. Maybe you don't like these buttons. You can go for Nurturing Instincts for some more damage. Literally. Play around with it. Find what works for you. This is typically what I would run. This is like, you know, if you ask me, hey, can you link me a build? I'd probably link you this tree. We pick up all of the important stuff. We get our AoE stops, Ursula's Vortex, Typhoon. Uh, we get all of the, the tanky stuff that help us tank. We get our pseudo cheat death. I really like this build. If it's uh, incorporeal, you could just do something like that. And if it's afflicted, you could do something like that, like this. But most weeks, something like this, gonna be completely fine. You'll be able to do the highest content with this, something like this. Oh, and not, actually, before I go, another thing you can do if you want, you could do something like this. Take the 15% movement speed. If you like that thing, if you like to go fast, this is not terrible either, but I don't really take that. I like a little bit extra damage and uh, Heart of the Wild, you just press off cooldown. It's just a little bit of extra damage. So, as for the Guardian Tree, first build, as you can see right here, this is like, what I, this again, this is what I would link someone if they were like, yo, can you just link me a quick build? This build is, it's, it's, it's super safe. It's tanky, it does good damage, and you have insane off healing through Dreamer Scenarius and after the Wildfire. There, there is some floater points that you can change around. Like, if you don't like Dreamer Scenarius and you don't want to think about it, you can just take this out. And then, you know, Ursox Endurance, this is a fine option. Improved several Instincts, not a bad option. The only thing with this, I'll say, is that if you don't end up using the second charge, it, you're basically wasting a talent point, which is not ideal. But if you're not running Jupiter Scenarios, I would say just go with Ursox Endurance. The reason Ursox Endurance is nice is because most people are going to tell you to try to maintain one stack of Iron Fur on single target and AoE. And because this is increasing the duration by two seconds, it's going to allow you to keep that one stack up for longer so you can send in more mauls or raises depending on the scenario i like dream scenarios though i think it's really fun i like putting the team on my back and carrying there is also a debate about whether or not you should be going moonfire talents or two points into flashing claws if you are just doing your weekly 20 you're not really stressed about doing world first content don't stress about it just play what you enjoy if you like those extra thrash procs you think it's fun go for it however i do think that galactic guardian and twin moonfire is slightly better for a couple reasons one it's 
for two points, you get an insane amount of damage for, for literally free. The, Moonfire is typically my second or third uh, damage on my DPS meters. I don't, I can't show you here because I don't have a segment saved, but um, it's insane damage. And also just the nature of Galactic Guardian, we get a lot of extra rage. And I mean, I already went on a spiel earlier about why extra rage is so good. So I think, I think these two are pretty locked in for me. I can't imagine myself ever taking these out, but you know, you get uh, this build, you get everything you'd ever want for bear. So that's this build. Second build I will talk about. Now this next build I'm going to show you is the one I run in a lot of my videos. However, I don't recommend it. It Well, no. The reason I don't recommend it is because you're simply going to be doing lower damage and you're, you're honestly arguably a little squishier with this build because it doesn't really do a whole lot for mitigating magic damage like the other build does with Urshak's Fury. I mean, you could do something like this, but... We're losing so much Earth's uh, Fury value with Raze. The reason I would recommend this build if you are completely new to Bear and you only ever want to press two buttons. In this build, I am only pressing Mangle, Thrash, and Iron Fur, and occasionally Moonfire on single target. Now, you could press Maul on single target, and you honestly should for the damage, but this is like my I don't want to think about it. I just want to press my buttons and just do damage build i just literally press mangle thrash iron fur you're gonna do pretty okay damage L less obviously i mean we're losing l just every dps talent pretty much but this is a safe pick the rotation for this very simple not a terrible option uh you know again you have this floor point in ursox fury you could put it wherever you want you could pick up flashing claws you could pick up after the wildfire dream scenarios i like I think Flash and Cause is fun, so I go this. So this is my second build that I play. But like I said, it's, this is the build that I would recommend that you play. I'll just quickly show it one more time. That, 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 that. Oh, I made a mistake somewhere. Yeah, like this. So. R write it down lock it in there you go there's the tree uh so let's talk about okay next is next is the big stuff it's about the rotation and how to play bear and cooldown usage and initiating pull and all that stuff so there's a few th so let's talk about aoe for a second there's a few things that you want to really think about one don't overcap on rage two raise as much as you can for damage and three if you need more physical mitigation iron fur Oh, and also, you want to be pressing Mangle, Thrash, and Raze over Swipe. In AoE, you do press Swipe over a Galactic Guardian proc, but everything you you want to try to minimize your amount of times you cast Swipe. So here, I'll give a quick example. Just not going to be pressing any cooldowns. This is just like standard AoE rotation. So get to we're going to try to get to maximum amount of stacks of Thrash as possible. As you can see there, I can't do anything, so I'm going to swipe, mangle, I'm going to raise so I don't overcap on rage. Again, building up those thrash stacks. I got tooth and claw proc, so I'm just going to, right here, try not to overcap on rage. Trying everything in my power not to swipe here. And as you can see, you really don't have to swipe that often. Let's say, oh, I'm taking some damage, I, I'm going to iron for, maybe I'm two stacks of iron for just feel it out do not overthink it as long as you're pr not pressing swipe you're gonna be fine like right there like you know see just try not to overcap on rage iron fur there oh i swipe it's all good raise tooth and claw proc there so i'm just gonna send iron fur just not not overcapping on rage raising as much as i can for damage it's very simple keep up your stack th uh thrash stacks sorry and yeah swipe less single target rotation there is a minor change you do want to press moonfire over swipe so swipe should be the last thing that you press in a single target scenario so again i'll give an example let me just spend my rage on a single target boss i always pull with growl moonfire so growl moonfire and then again just in my mind i'm also maul on single target and all i'm thinking is try not to swipe Keeping up Moonfire 100% of the time, Thrash 100% of the time, and then I'm mauling as much as I can for damage. If I need Iron Fur, I press it. 
I could do anything there, so I'm gonna swipe, do that. Mall. I, I have an ability tracker here, so you guys can see what I'm pressing. Just like that. So pr pretty simple, pretty simple. Just try not to swipe. Don't overcap on rage, that's another big thing. Okay, so now let's actually involve some cooldowns. So let's assume that this is a pack of mobs in a dungeon. I have everything going into it. What? How do I initiate it? What do I want to press? In what order? All that stuff. So I'm not going to talk about Heart of the Wild. You literally just use this on off cooldown. Like if you have it, you just press it. So don't don't think too much about that one. So if I have everything up, I always pop everything right off the bat. Incarn, Rage of the Sleeper, and Barkskin. The reason why I do this is because. First off, Incarn lasts 30 seconds, and Barkskin only has a 32 second cooldown if we're running this talent. So by the time we are out of Incarn, Barkskin is already going to be up. So by sending it, we're mitigating more damage, and we're getting some extra Brambles value. And then Rage of Sleeper, you almost... It's its, it's painful to hold this just because of the tier set, and in conjunction with Incarn, it's, it's a very high damage combo. So I'm going to Incarn, Rage of the Sleeper, Barkskin right off the bat... I'm going to use our hard-hitting Thrash for AoE threat generation. I'm going to Mangle, and then I'm going to Raise. This is going to give you infinite threat, and immediately I have decent Absorb Shield. So I'm going to, I'll show you guys here. So I'm going to, I'll, I'll, I'll do it slowly. Incarn, Rage of Sleeper, Barkskin, Thrash, Mangle, Raise, and then it's just the normal rotation. In Incarn, you, you're going to have to be a lot more careful about your Rage uh, Generation because it's way easier to overcap just because of everything is, uh, costs less rage. So I really like Mangle Raise, Mangle Raise, Mangle Raise on this uh, target count, making sure we keep up Thrash, and I'm weaving in Iron Furs. But again, don't overthink it. See what I'm doing right now? I'm just spamming Raise. This is fine. You're not maximizing the Vicious Cycle talent by doing this, but it's fine. Don't worry too much about it. Maybe you want to maintain that one stack of Iron Fur. Very, very simple. Again, we're trying not to swipe. We do swipe over Galactic Guardian proc though, so keep that in mind. And we still press swipe, so don't unbind it. I'll just do it for a little bit. Iron Fur there, why not? There you go. See, Raze is going to do a ton of damage. And yeah, I mean, this is obviously not what Mythic Plus will look like, but Raze is going to be pretty high most of the time. When you're pulling a boss, it's literally the same thing. You just incorporate the single target rotation. So... I'm, on a boss, I would pop Incarn, Rage of Sleeper, and Barkskin off the pole. So, again, like I said, Taunt, Moonfire, Rage of Sleeper, Pretend I Incarned, Mangle, Iron Fur, Mauling as much as I can for damage. That's literally it. Keep up Thrash hundreds of time, Moonfire hundreds of time. Very simple. Don't overthink it. Just try not to swipe. It's the only thing that you can overthink as a bear is swiping. Swiping can be detrimental. So let's talk about just cooldown usage in general. So as for main cooldowns, we have Barkskin, Incarn, Rage of Sleeper, and Survival of the Fittest, or uh, Survival Instincts, rather. More often than not, you're going to want to be using your Barkskin, Incarn, and Rage of Sleeper just as much as you can because just of the way that they work and, you know, Brambles, all three of these are, you know, DPS increases. So just setting them off cooldown, mitigating more of a little damage, and then... Um, just doing extra damage is really nice. For survival instincts, typically for me, it's a last resort since it has such a long cooldown, but don't be afraid to use it because we have it. If you've never used it in a key, I mean, you could have just sent it at some point just to help a little bit mitigate more damage. You have to remember that we are a mitigation tank, not a reactionary tank. So you want to be using your defensives before you take mass amounts of damage and not after. You know, if we get hit for 80% of our health and then bark skin, that's completely backwards. We want to bark skin before we get hit so we do not take 80% of our health, if that makes sense. Obviously, like that advice I just gave you about setting them off cooldown, if you're going into a boss or a pull where you know you're going to get hit really hard, like on Okart when he does his grab or breath, or maybe the last boss of Burzon's Rise when he does his breath, you can hold a cooldown. Typically, I'll hold Barkskin just because it's a, a short cooldown and it's our lowest damage cooldown, but don't be afraid to hold something. That's something that'll just come with reps as you do Mythic Plus. You know, you're gonna you're gonna do a pull or a boss, you're gonna be like, wow, that really hurt. Next time, I should probably have a defensive for that. So, just keep that in mind. Try not to hold things for too long, though. The only thing that you can hold for a long time is Strava Instincts, but everything else, don't 
don't worry too, 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 too much about holding it for long periods of time. I guess there is frenzy regen as well. So I typically don't press frenzy regen that much in a key because if you're using your defensives enough, your health should be fairly stable in most scenarios. But of course, don't be afraid to rip, rip a frenzy regen if you need the healing as it's what it's there for. So I think that's everything I wanted to talk about in terms of rotation. Um, let's get into some tips and tricks, the last part of the video. So th this first tip is the, the big one that I want to um, that I want to talk about. The other ones are kind of whatever, but it's when you're grouping mobs. So what often what I see is what bears will do as they're grouping a pack of mobs, even in Incarn, is they'll, th they'll like thrash and they'll just start spamming swipe like this as they're grouping mobs. There's a th problem with this, and it's one, why are we swiping when we can mangle? That, that's, that's actually pretty much it. That's 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 the reason why that's not good. So what I would want, like, let's say I don't have Incarn and I'm grouping mobs. What I would want to see is, you know, obviously send your cooldowns, but ma it's, again, mangle and thrash. So let's say I'm doing it. I'm going to thrash. I'm going to mangle. I'm still running. I can. I have to swipe here. I'm going to mangle. I'm going to thrash. I'm not spamming swipe. I'm doing the normal rotation as I'm grouping the mobs. This way, we're generating rage. We're going to be tanky. We're going to be able to iron fur. We're going to be able to raise sooner. If we're swipe, swipe is terrible. It does very little damage. I think it does less than an auto attack. Yeah, I think it does less than an auto attack and it generates you no rage. So as you're grouping mobs, try not to swipe. Mangle, thrash. See, I'm going to raise here. Don't be afraid. Again, like I'm turning my camera as I'm moving. Now, let's say it's the first pull of the dungeon and you are an incarn. Mangle, thrash. Mangle, thrash. As I group mobs, I typically don't worry about raising unless I get a proc of Tooth and Claw. I just mangle and raise just to make it a little bit easier on myself. And then once I'm established, that's when I start, you know, weaving in the raises. So, yeah. As you're grouping mobs, try do the normal rotation don't swipe it's okay okay it's not the end of the world but it's just you're kind of gimping yourself in terms of damage and rage generation my second tip is if you're running dream scenarios there's actually a huge macro that you can use it's right here i'll have it in the description what this macro I, i'm not a macro guru i honestly have no idea like what exactly like this stuff means but what i do know is that if you're using this macro and you use regrowth in bear form while you're in combat, it will not take you out of bear form. So see, I'm not in combat and I, re I use the macro, I'm out of com or I get out of bear form. But if I get in combat and I try to regrowth myself, I'm gonna press the same button. See how it's not taking me out of bear form. This is gonna save you so many deaths. I I've died countless times to regrowthing myself because I you know maybe a proc fell off or I actually pressed uh, regrowth too many times. It takes me out of bear form and you just get immediately deleted. This is an absolute lifesaver if you enjoy the Dream of Scenarios talent. So, like I said, I'll have this in the description below. The next tip is about macroing a button with Iron Fur. So, you know, you might macro Thrash with Iron Fur, Swipe to Iron Fur, Mangle. You do not want to do this. You will almost 100% overcap on Rage if you do this because you do not press those buttons often enough to a point where you will be able to spend your rage fast enough without overcapping on rage. So just, and also like you might get into a scenario where, oh, let me thrash. Oh wait, it used my uh, uh, rage on iron fur. Now I can't heal myself. So just get used to spamming iron fur. I know that, you know, bear gets kind of memed on for spamming one button, but uh, iron fur has found a very comfortable home on my R key and it has worked well for me. Uh, literally like, See, using a key, like, it's not that uh, rare for me. As you can see, I'm literally spamming it. I, I'm just so used to spamming it. Like, it, I don't even, it doesn't even hurt my hand anymore. It used to for sure, but do not macro it to any button. Just press the button. Uh, I believe that's it, though. That's everything I wanted to cover. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope this helps. I know it's not edited or anything, but um, like I said, there are timestamps. So all those new bears... I hope this helps. Thank you guys so much for all the kind comments. I'm so happy. I can't believe I've got like a hundred subscribers and an instant, all of the nice comments. I, I love it. Thank you guys so much. I'm very grateful. Stay tuned for more videos and I will see you guys in the next one.